Hello everybody, I'm Ian with Board Feelings, and this is it. This is the day when I reveal my top 25 games of all time. I know so many of you have been waiting for this, all, you know, like two of you. Um, so yeah, I just want to tell you what my top 25 games of all time are, so that way you kind of get an idea of the kind of games that I like to play and I, I enjoy. So that way it can be established on my channel. Real quick, I'm not going to bring any of the games out. I'm just going to talk about them, put up a picture. I'm also going to make this very quick. They're going to be two minutes tops per game. I'm going to try for like one minute per game. I want this video to be under 30 minutes. Um, so yeah, because of that, I'm just going to start going. So here we go. 25 is going to be Dinosaur Island. I love Dinosaur Island. Dinosaur Island um, was one of the first games I really got into in my in the hobby. Um, it tell you how new I am into the hobby, right? Um, but there's just something about it, like the flow of the game, how you go to each phase, and each phase feeds into the other. So then you get victory points at the end of every round. It just it was it was a nice flow of a it's a nice flow of a game, and that's why I enjoy it so much. Plus the theme is fantastic. I don't have all of the nice dino meeples. I have the retail version, but I still love the game so much. So that's a good game, Dinosaur Island. Number 24 is gonna be a game that most people don't like, but I've talked about it, I believe I've talked about it on this channel before. It's Founders of Gloomhaven. I love Founders of Gloomhaven. Um I mostly play it solo. In fact, I've only played it multiplayer twice of like the 15 times I've played it. The solo, the puzzle of it is so fantastic because you have to get the correct action cards so that way you can establish the correct resources, place them on the board. So it's not only it's not only an, an, uh, an adjacency puzzle, but also it's an order, like what actions do you play in what order? Oh, there's so many things that interlock and interconnect so beautifully in that game. I absolutely love it. I know why people don't like it. I would probably never play it multiplayer unless somebody else really likes it as well. But it's a great solo game. Founders of Gloomhaven, my number 24. My number 23 is Kanban EV. Um, I got Kanban... Uh, Kanban EV was my first iteration of playing Kanban, Kanban, and also was my first Lacerda game, and I really like it. I like, um, how you're, it's an action, it's a worker placement game, essentially, where you're, uh, collecting different resources and tiles, and then turning those into cards, and then the cards become points. But the way it all connects, and then you, you, the, you get points for, the cars in your garage, but also if they're upgraded, I like the way it all those points interlock. So that way you can you can score some really good points with with those. Um, which obviously that's Lacerda's thing is interconnecting mechanisms, and so Kanban EV I feel does it really well and is my favorite Lacerda game because of it. I've only played two though, that and on Mars, but Kanban EV is my favorite. Um, that was number 23, Kanban EV. 22 is Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven was a game I used to own. I don't own it anymore. I played it about 35 times uh, with a group. We played almost weekly, and I was really having a lot of fun. But then after about 20 times, I was realizing this is just kind of the same thing every time. We're just, you know, killing all monsters, which is fine, you know. But it just felt very repetitive. The only interesting part of the game was unlocking new characters so that way you could learn a new character. But then you play that character uh, five times and they're like, you know what, I want a new character now. Uh, but often you can't unlock a character after five plays. So I found the prospect of of changing out characters and trying new characters to be more exciting than the actual game. I do really like the actual game, but I, after a number of plays, I just wanted to learn new characters. So I eventually sold it, but it is my number 22, Gloomhaven. 21 is Dinosaur Island Roar and Write. I absolutely loved Dinosaur Island Roar and Write. I've talked about it on this channel, I reviewed it. I think it's an absolutely fantastic. In fact, it's new to the list this year. It is a new game. I have only played it. This, I played this game probably less than any of the other games I played on this list but I absolutely love it that much. 
I think the, it's fantastic, the dice drafting, and then those dice become your workers, and then you can do worker placement, and then you do a tour through your park. I, it's just really great. I haven't played with the, the app has been released semi-recently, and I haven't played with the app yet, but I really want to, because I think that'll make it even more, even smoother of a game, because I don't mind drawing that out your, your park on the map, but having a digital version would be fantastic. So that's Dinosaur Island, who are in my number 21. Number 20 is Anachrony. Anachrony, and I have the big, you know, Infinity Box Deluxe Editions uh, thing. Um, and this one I haven't played much either because I got it kind of recently, and I've played it mostly solo. But it's just a fantastic worker placement game with time travel and being able to, to mitigate your actions. It's another puzzle. It's another one of those games where, like, what can I do to, to optimize my outcome. And so I love Anachrony. I love the time travel theme. I think it works so perfectly. So that is Anachrony, my number 20. My number 19 is a legacy game that I officially haven't finished yet because of the everything that's going on in the world the past few years. It is a Betrayal Legacy. Betrayal uh, at House on the Hill was one of the first games I purchased. Even before I really got into the hobby, that was a game I owned. I loved that game. I still really enjoy that game. I eventually got um, Betrayal Baldur's Gate. I liked that one even more. I felt it was a little more streamlined. And then when Betrayal Legacy came out, I jumped on and I got it. I think it's a fantastic game. There is still balance issues and things like that, but I just love the idea of you're building this house together and then somebody turns traitor and then the game just changes and it can be one of 50 scenarios. I think that's so exciting. I think that's so interesting that the every time you play, it's going to be a different game. And that's and, and also based on those tile layouts, it can be so random and so one-sided. It, it very well can be impossible to beat. Either side can be impossible. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I love the game. I think it's exciting when the traitor happens and then one person has to seclude themselves and, and learn how to be the traitor and then work as a team to stop the traitor. I really like it. That is Betrayal Legacy, my number 19. Number 18 is a game I don't own, uh, but I've played a number of times. It is Vindication by Orange Nebula. I love Vindication. When uh, my friend purchased it, I was like, yeah, I thought about backing this, but I didn't because I didn't know much about it, whatever. <sighs> I wish... And since then, they've had two more Kickstarters, I believe. And each time, I struggle. I'm like, I want this game, but I, I, I don't get it because I know he has it and I can play any time. And it's weird because it's just a cube pusher. You go into a location that gives you some cubes. You move the cubes to a different spot to do different cubes. And then those cubes become a different thing that then give you points. Like, that's, that's all it is. But the theming of it and how you move around the board, discovering the board and how you are, you can choose different strategies. There are, you know, there are a few different strategies you can take. I think three main ones, I think. Uh, if I remember right, it's been a little while since I played it. I think it's a fantastic game, even though it is just a cube pusher. The theming on it uh, completely saved the game, makes it enjoyable, it makes it fun, I love it. That is Vindication, my number 18. Number 17 is another new entry to the, this list. It's a game I got this year, and it is Sleeping Gods. Sleeping Gods is a giant campaign open world adventure game. I played, I've only played one session technically, but it took me 13 hours um, to play one session, and you're just this tiny boat, with this crew of nine people traveling on the board, discovering side quests. It's basically side quests the game. You keep completing side quests until you've completed enough of them for the timer of the game to run out, so that way you can do the final quest. That's really the entire game. But the open-worldness of it means that you can go anywhere you want. You can do anything you want. I have seen so little in the game. I can't wait to explore more and go in a completely different direction. I have all the expansions. I can't wait to go, you know, to the outskirts of the map. I can't wait to go into the dungeons. It's a fantastic game. That is Sleeping Gods, my number 17. Uh, 16 is a cooperative game that I mostly play solo because... It's a fun puzzle game. I love puzzle games. It is Set a Watch. Set a Watch is a, as I said, a cooperative um, tower defense game. Each game must be played with four characters. And in the 
in the in the game, one of those characters is going to go to the camp and do different camp actions, while the other three characters are going to go on watch to defend the camp against a horde of monsters that is coming to, to attack the camp. That's the game. There's a line of monsters. You reveal them. You then must use your dice that you rolled um, to then, you know, either to use the dice to attack them directly, or you can use the dice for abilities on your player board. Fantastic game. I love the puzzle of it, because each, it's all random based off of, you know, the shuffle of the cards, what cards come out, what monsters are in play, and then what abilities you have, and then the roll of the dice, but you can solve the puzzle. It may, may be a little difficult, you may get hurt a little bit, you may lose, but the puzzle is solvable, and that's what I love about Set a Watch, my number 16. Number 15 is a, uh, I feel, a, 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 uh, what, an underappreciated game. Uh, this is a game that the brothers Murph, uh, talk about a lot, and I got it because of them, and I'm so glad I did. The Prodigals Club, my number 16, no, 15, sorry. The Prodigals Club is such a fantastic worker placement game, where you are this guy in high society, that no longer wants to be in high society. So you want to lose all of your, all of your reputation. You want to lose all of your money and you want to lose an election. And the, the thing with the game is you, the, you have those three, three areas where you are playing in, but the score at the end of your game is the highest of those three. So you are trying to mitigate, you're trying to do, you know, you try to mitigate all three of those things so that way you can be as low as possible um, to potentially even get zero in all of them, which I haven't done, but I've gotten close. I think I've gotten two or three and in, in, is like my my lowest score I want. I got because you want the lowest score possible, but I love the theming. I love the game. Um, I even have Last Will, which I haven't played yet. I have it. I want to play it. Because it's, it's essentially the prequel to the game, but it can be integrated into Prodigal's Club. So I want to play it so that way then I can integrate in Prodigal's Club. I, I just haven't done it yet. So that is the Prodigal's Club number 15. Uh, number 14 is another game I don't own, uh, but it is a fantastic game, which is why it's my number 14. It is Edge of Darkness by AEG and John D. Clare. Um, Edge of Darkness is another game that I think is underappreciated. Some people really like it, but most people thought it was too big for what it is, which I get. Um, but what Edge of Darkness is essentially a card crafting worker placement game. Um, you are going to be placing your workers around, uh, around, uh, a variable set of boards, depending on what scenario, scenario you are playing. And you're going to be taking actions and collecting cards and creating, you know, different, oh, it's also card drafting, like, because it's not only card crafting you're also card drafting from a row and you can draft other players cards really interesting because that uh, it, it's a really interesting mechanism but what it does is it means that as as you go on these cards that you're playing build up in in strength and as you're doing it you just uh, you start out so small you start like i don't know Especially like when you play a new scenario, because you don't see how the different different actions, because each scenario gives a different board location and a different card that can be slotted to create to craft a card, and you don't know how they're going to interact very well. You can look at it like I don't know. It looks like we're not going to have a lot of money this game, and sometimes you don't. Or you look at it like okay, it looks like this one is going to be a lot of attacking, like you want to attack monsters, and so each scenario you play, you're trying to mitigate what you see into optimization and that's it's a it's a puzzle it's a puzzle each time you play and i love puzzle games so that's why edge of darkness is my number 14. so my number 13 is i believe yes it is my favorite dungeon crawler and it's not a popular one i know why people don't like it because it came out it, there's lots of dungeon crawlers out there but this is my absolute favorite dungeon crawler it is deep madness so in Deep Madness, it is a modern day Cthulhu style dungeon crawler that takes place under water in an ocean base. Um, I know there's a game, a video game that does that. I can't remember what it is right now, but it's basically that the video, the, the board game. Um, so you always play six characters. You technically can play down to four, uh, with some mid, with some rules adjustments, but it's made to play with six characters and you are taking those six characters to solve a puzzle to, to defeat the scenario. It's a, it's a campaign game. 
what I love about the game is I've played, I think, 10 scenarios, maybe a little less than maybe eight scenarios. So let's say I've played a few scenarios. Each scenario is a vastly different puzzle. And usually with dungeon crawlers, the puzzle can be solved or the, the scenario can be solved by simply just attacking. You know, you enter a room and you just attack and you can survive by doing that. You know, you can, you can prolong your survival by simply attacking. In Deep Madness, the last thing you want to do is attack these monsters. Like, that's like, a, I, I have to kill these monsters because there's too many of them at this point. The monsters are tough and they hurt you and you're not very strong and it's more of a puzzle in escaping these monsters, running them in circles, so that way you can complete the puzzle than it is attacking. Now granted, you do attack a lot, you do kill a lot of monsters, but that's not the main puzzle. That's not the main thing you're trying to do. You're trying to survive long enough so that you can comp complete the objective. And that's what I love about the game, that it takes, I feel, the genre of dungeon crawlers, of running into a room and blowing up everything inside, it takes that and flips on its head and says, no, instead what you should do is you should run away. <laughs> you should run away, not fight these guys, and by doing that you will uh, you, are, you will po possibly be able to defeat, accomplish this objective. So that's what I love about Deep Madness, my number 13. Number 12 is a new game on the list, a game that I got very, fairly recently. It is Too Many Bones. Too Many Bones by Chip Theory Games. I don't really know what else what to talk about. I only have Undertow, which I believe is somewhere over right there, I think. Yeah. Um, I only have Undertow. I really enjoy it. It's a great game. I love the little tactical puzzle that happens every round. I love upgrading my character. And for me, uh, much like Gloomhaven, the most fun I have in Too Many Bones is learning a new character. Being able to swap different characters out, different character combinations. I always play uh, with two characters at least. Um, and I find that very enjoyable. I find, I like the puzzle of it. It's a good, it's a good puzzle. I like puzzles, okay? <laughs> Get off my back. So that is Too Many Bones, my number 12. Number 11 is another new game, which I believe is my last new game. Let me double check. Oh, no, wait. I got, I don't remember when this other game came out. This might not be my last new game. It's a maybe. Um, so my number 11 is Imperium Classics and Legends. I love Imperium. David Turtsy is one of my favorite designers. He's a hit and miss designer though, because he goes so complex sometimes that he gets lost and the, the game gets lost in its mechanisms. But when he's, when he's co-designing and when he's editing and when he's creating solo modes, oh, he is fantastic. I love how Imperium Classics and Legends, you're taking a civilization and each civilization plays different. And you're just gonna be, it's a deck builder, you know? You're going to be playing cards to acquire new cards to eventually acquire the most points by, you know, by completing different, by getting different cards and completing different sets and combos and things like that. And that's, and that's all well and good, but the interesting thing about the game is that in each box there are eight different civilizations. So if you get both boxes, you have 16 unique civilizations. 16, I, I love playing new characters. <laughs> and so being able to, to take a, take a faction out and be like, okay, I'm going to learn this faction this game. But then what's so fun about, what's even more fun about this when playing solo is each, each faction has its own solo mode. So not only are you playing against your unique uh, faction, you're playing against a unique solo opponent as well. So they're interacting with, with the cards and with you differently than any other character, any other faction would. And it creates this such a unique and fun puzzle. And, and that's what I love about it is that is those unique deck of cards that create a unique faction and a unique gameplay each time you play the game. And that's why I like Imperium Classics and Legends, my number 11. Okay. So here we are finally getting to my top 10 games of all time. My number 10 is a, rondelle game where you are slowly upgrading your dice to have them ascend after they've worked so hard it is teotihuacan city of gods yes i didn't remember the ta the, the the subtitle of the game it is city of gods teotihuacan is just a really fun work rondelle game it you just going in a circle you're taking action and they can upgrade those dice but what's so fun about it is 
is the puzzle, uh, the puzzle of trying to time getting multiple dice together to take a stronger action. And so you're sitting there you're like, okay, I want to, I want to do this thing. I want to get, you know, five, four wood instead of just two wood. How do I do that? Okay, if I move these around, okay, let's do that. And then you solve the puzzle and you get it and you get exactly what you needed to then do the next thing. I love that part of Tarot Tiracon, of, of, of figuring out how to get the best resources with your available dice. Tetrakon is a fantastic game, so that is why it is my number 10. Number 9 is um, the last... Oh no, I was going to say the last Euro non-Euro game, but that's not true. I got one more non-Euro on my list. Um, it's my second to the last non-Euro game. Um, my number 9 is a big, fluffy war game. <laughs> and it's going to say fluffy because it is... Loot. I absolutely love loot. I don't play as much as I want to. Um, I know it can play online with an app, and that definitely helps. But I, I, I love loot so much. I want to get it played more often. I want to get played with different people. But the problem is, you know, each time you bring it out, you got to teach them <laughs> because no one else knows the game. Because none of my friends know the game. So, um, loot is a fantastic game because because you can try out and play different factions and each faction plays completely and utterly different many other games when they have variability in how it is played you get like a player power those are fun it's like a player power is fun but i really enjoy full asymmetry where each character or faction plays completely different i love that in a game and loot does that more than any other game I can think of. I guess Merchant's Cove is a, is a close second. The thing with Merchant's Cove is yes, you play a unique game, but your unique game doesn't really interfere with other people's unique, unique games. Loot, that's all you're doing. You want your unique game to interfere with other people's unique games. So you need to understand other people's unique games in order to accomplish that goal. And that's what I love about Loot. It's not about knowing how to play your character. It's about knowing how to play your character against other people's characters. And that's what I find, why I find it so exciting. I love Loot. Loot is a fantastic game. And that, and I wish I could play it more. If I could play it more, this would probably be my number one game. Honestly, like, I love Loot so much. It is a fantastic game. That is why it is my number nine. Number eight is a game that I, I do really love. I do really enjoy, but I like it a lot more because how much my wife enjoys it. The first time I played this game, I was iffy teaching her because it's a big, heavy Euro game. One of the most complex, according to some people. And I was iffy on it, and she absolutely loved it. We played it the next day, even. Like, she's like, I want to play it again. I was like, okay, we'll play it again. It is Brass Birmingham. I haven't played uh, Lancashire, Lancashire um, Brass Lancashire, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I haven't played that, so I can't speak towards that at all. I've only played Birmingham, but Birmingham is so fantastic. I love Brass so much. I love the hand management and then playing when you when you you look at your cards, you're like, okay, these are what I can do. How can I optimize what I have on the board? And then, you know, trying to flip different buildings over. To, to deliver i it's brass i love brass so much i love the puzzle of it and what what's even what's even great from better for me is it's not a puzzle i've ever played so because you can't i don't think you can solo maybe there's an unofficial online thing but i've never played it solo and so i love the puzzle because i can play it with someone else and i'm competing pu different puzzles are competing with each other and that's why i love brass my number eight I'm going to go through 7, 6, and 5 fairly quickly uh, because it is a trio of games that I've talked about many times that I've been thinking a lot about this trio of games and I rate them officially the same on BGG. I'm thinking of dropping one of them so this list next year will probably be a little different but um, they are all really fantastic games and I like them all for different reasons because of their different complexities. But they're all from the same designer in the same series. My number seven is Paladins of the West Kingdom. Number six is Architects of the West Kingdom. And number five is Viscounts of the West Kingdom. I love all three of these games. I think they're all fantastic. I 
The reason why Paladins is the lowest of the three is because it is the most difficult. It is the most difficult to teach, uh, and also just to play a lot of AP involved a lot of times. Number six is, uh, Architects is number six because it is so simple and it is so easy to teach and easy to play. I love how, how easy the game is, but that's also why it's not my favorite because I feel it is the easiest and so often I'm like, I, I'm not, not that I'm bored of it, but I've played it a lot, and so I don't feel there's much more to explore in the game until the new expansion comes out. <laughs> um, that's why it's my number six. Number five is Viscounts. It's the newest for me, but also I feel the puzzle is really interesting. I like how there are three viable strategies, and I've heard people say that if you don't go into the castle at all, you will lose. I have not gone into the castle, and I have won. Now, granted, it could be my imp the opponents I went against, but I've done other strategies besides the castle strategy. In fact, the castle strategy is my least favorite strategy. I do enjoy, enjoy it, but I try to do building and manuscripts, and I try to win that way, because it is just, I feel, more fun. <laughs> um, and so, uh, I, that's my Viscounts is my number five. I think it's the most interesting of the three with a rondelle and the three different strategies, strategies, which are fairly unique based on your deck building. I will enjoy Viscounts. That is my seven through five Paladins, Architects, and Viscounts of the West Kingdom. My number four is an economic game that I purchased on a whim. Uh, I even didn't hear very many good things about it. I didn't have much of it at all. But I knew I enjoyed the designer uh, based off his other work. And I was like, you know what? Let's go ahead and get this game and we'll see how it is. I've only played it solo, except for once. I played it multiplayer once. And I just love this economic style game. It is Expedition to New Dale. This game is it's the board game version of Oh My Goods. I also have Oh My Goods. I, I do enjoy Oh My Goods. I'm working through the campaign of that right now. But I think Expedition to New Dale is the superior version of of Oh My Goods. It is fantastic. I love how you, you action you kind of work replacement but action selection to then, you know, acquire uh, to then, you know, get the new cards so that way you can build new buildings and you can have building like a mini tech tree of resources to then convert those resources into the most expensive resource you can to get the most money. I think that's fantastic. I love, um, Expedition to New Dale so much. I haven't finished the campaign of it, but I am working my way through it. And I love that there is a campaign for it. It's a Euro game with a progressing campaign that, you know, it slowly gets more difficult. And I just, I love that about Expedition to New Dale. My number three is my last non-Euro game, Marvel Champions. Um, I own everything of Marvel Champions and I, I played with most of it. I'm still working through one of the campaigns. And what I love about it is you can get new characters and each, it's a puzzle of, of learning the new character. So it, honestly, that's what I like most about it is, is all these new characters interacting with these different villains. And you're just trying to solve these two puzzles. Each time you, you put down a game, you're like solving this, these two puzzles. You have a new character, new villain, do, do it. Go to battle. And I love the game. I think it's fantastic. I, I jumped on Marvel Champions when it first came out, and I've been with it all along. Fantastic game. I love it. I love the card play. I love the hand management. I love all the unique characters, all the unique villains. Fantastic game. Marvel Champions, my number three. My number two is another game that I got pretty early on in the hobby, and it's risen this much uh, because... Of how much my, my wife enjoys it, honestly. Like, I, I enjoy it as well, but, but how much my wife enjoys a game really helps elevate a game in my eyes. And that is Sulkin, uh, the Mayan calendar. I think of what the tagline was. Um, I love the gears. I love, you know, how you set a set of worker down. Like, how long are they going to ride on this gear? I don't know. You only have two actions you can take. You can, well, I guess there's a third one you, you could do, but either, you know, Pull a worker or place a worker. As I place as many workers as you want or pull as many workers as you want. And that's all you're doing. And the puzzle of, I want to get this, this worker at least to here so I can pull him. Oh, but he passed now because I need, I needed to place some, but I, you know, that puzzle of, 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 of optimizing your poles and your places is really enjoyable. 
and with the gears and with time as a mechanism, it's just fantastic. That's why Tolkien is my number two favorite game of all time. My number one favorite game of all time. This was one of the first games I purchased. Um, and that could be why it's my favorite game because I played it a lot. But also, it's just really enjoyable. It's just a really solid, good game. A lot of people like this game. Some people don't. Um, it is Scythe. I absolutely love Scythe. Honestly, like, how much I love Scythe compared to my other games is kind of, it's kind of hard. It was, it's, it's easy to make this list. I'm like, Scythe number one. <laughs> That's, it's done. There's nothing else that it possibly could be. Um, Scythe is such a good game. I love the action selection mechanism. I love the upgrading mechanism. I love being able to, the, 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 on the board, the area control of the board, the resources that are on the board. I love being able, I, I usually take, I'm usually very, very peaceful, but the game doesn't look like it's going to be peaceful, but it, but it usually is, unless you get someone who's really aggressive, which happens sometimes. Um, and then they learn that this is an aggressive, an aggressive game. Um, but everything about Scythe, like it's it's not a perfect game. It's not. I know it's not a perfect game. I know there's balance issues. I know there's optimal strategies to to winning the the, the game. And if you play against those people, they will just always take the optimal strategies. I don't play that way. I play a, a, a casual game of Scythe, and it's just a fun, enjoyable time of trying to make your group your faction be as widespread as you can and as cool as you can with mechs and just dominating the landscape i love scythe scythe is a fantastic game and it is my number one game of all time so there you go my top 25 games of all time um that's the list i've done it so thank you. Hopefully I got it under 30 minutes. I, uh, but also I'm going to have timestamps. So hopefully you utilize those if you wanted to. Um, I can't wait to get to more regular reviewing content. Um, but yeah, I'm in with board feelings. Thank you so much for watching my top 25 games of all time. What are some of your favorite games? List your top, you know, five games of all time down in the comments. Um, I'm excited to see what they are because I love that people love different games and I love playing other people's favorite games and hearing them talk about it. So talk about yours. What's your favorite game? Leave your thoughts and feelings in the comments below. Mago experience many board feelings.